So today I'm going to just jump on and I'm going to do a smart vinyl scrap project and I'm going to be using a neoprene pencil case and I'm going to be adding a name to it. Now I've got two here to do and I got they picked these up from Officeworks for $2 in their clearance bin and I'm going to use them as personalized pencil cases slash gift bags which is pretty awesome. So I'm just using this scrap of smart vinyl. I've got my Cricut Joy, my mini press, my um, Cricut Joy tools uh, with the weeding tool, my mat, I've got my easy press mat somewhere too and I've got two different types of tweezers and I'm going to use the trimmer mainly for measuring today. So these are the reverse tweezers so when you squeeze them together they open and then you put them together, you let them go and then they close so then they hold your item together. So a little bit weird to use but they're really good for positioning things. All right, so let's get started. Now I'm just setting my tools together. Now I'm just going to measure my scrap uh, piece of smart vinyl. Of course, white on white makes it really hard to see, but we've got 14 centimeters, and on the other side's inches, if that's what you prefer, which is in my case five inches. And I'm just going to put it through the gap here to see what the measurement is, and it's two and a half centimeters but like a little bit over an inch that doesn't looks like maybe I've cut it at an angle when I've done it so we'll just go with the 2.4 centimeters when I'm working on my screen and I'll set up my guide with 2.5 centimeters and 14 centimeters so I'm just going to jump into design space and what I'm going to do is I'm notice I've got no grid here so I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to go to my canvas and I'm going to use metric units but here's where you can flick between metric and imperial and also I'm going to set myself to a full grid no grids kind of handy for certain things uh, but in this case I would like to see a grid so now I'm just going to add a shape and I'm going to create a shape the size of my scrap. So whatever size scrap you're using, this is where you create a shape that's that size. So I'm going to go with a 2.5 centimeter by 14 centimeter scrap. Well, that's the wrong way. So we're going to go the other way, 14 and 2.5. And now it's showing me in a grey and a basic cut, so I'm going to go to Operation Guide and change it to a guide because that's all I need. Now here I'm just, so today I am doing two personalised items, so I'm just going to pop names in. Now I'm going to use a font. Now today I am going to use a system font I got from DaFont, and I'll pop a link to that in the description box. And I'm just going to search for it and add it. Now, if I was just doing one name, that's probably will do. Now, I'm just going to fiddle around a little bit between the capitals and the lowercase because it's more about what is going to look good rather than whether it's a capital or a lowercase in this case given the type of font that it is. So I actually prefer the lowercase e too because it's got a little tail. The capital E's got three lines. So now I'm just going to check for the spelling of the second name and I'm just going to add the second name and I'm just going to do exactly the same process. get it so I'm happy and then I want the two names to fit on this same scrap so I will then adjust accordingly now once I'm happy with that I'm going to select the two names and press attach and then I'm going to press the make it and the next thing it's going to do is ask me how I would like to load my project and even though I'm going to use a smart bundle scrap, I'm going to say on mat because I need to load my scrap onto a mat. Now, 
you can see the all important mirror bottom on that the left hand side underneath the material size there we will need to switch that on i will switch that on right at the end right now i'm just checking that my um names are within the grid on my mat so now i'm just going to organize my mat itself make sure it lines up with exactly that picture we just saw so i'm just going to take my cover off my mat i'm going to use the metric side for this now i'm going to make sure that my shiny side is down because i'm using iron on i'm going to use my scraper to attach it to the mat and then i'm going to use my brayer make sure it's all nice and down you can do one or the other or both just make sure you don't scratch the adhesive now i just want to make sure there's enough room out the back of my cricut joy for this so i make sure i move my project far enough i don't want to hit hitting the wall at the other end now i'm just going to go in here make sure that the all important mirror button is turned on and then we're going to go ahead and go to the next screen now we'll press continue which is in the bottom right hand corner behind the camera now we are using smart iron on however if you do select your material to be a smart material you don't get the option to rerun so i'm just going to go to my material settings and i'm going to see what the smart vinyl pressure is so everyday iron on is 95 pressure but smart iron on is 118 pressure so i want to make sure i've got about 118 pressure let's see if there's anything in the iron on category that will match these settings everyday iron on mesh is close enough for me I'm happy with everyday iron on mesh to give myself that opportunity to press rerun if I need it. So now I'm going to go and select everyday iron on mesh as my material. I've made sure my mirror is turned on. My machine is flushing at me, ready to go. Here we go. Definitely got enough side on the other side. We'll load it in. Once we're happy, press go and it'll start preparing. Now this is the part I was talking about before where we get the option to either rerun or unload. If you select a smart vinyl option, it only gives you the option to unload at the moment. So what I want to do is I want to find one of the middles of my letters. Now white is a really hard color to do this with. So I'm going to go get my mobile phone. I'm going to put the use the torch function and see if I can find a little A. And I'm going to find a little middle bit and I'm going to pick that out. And if I'm happy that it's cut completely through, then I'm going to go ahead and press unload and let it go. Otherwise, I'm going to go press rerun. All right, so let's just do this. So now I'm just going to pop my machine away. I'm going to flip, put the cover back on my mat, flip it over and remove the iron on from the mat in the reverse way you can see my little a has already been weeded out now next i'm going to go get my torch again so i can find a good spot to where i can weed where i don't ruin my design and then after that i'm going to trust my cut and just keep pulling it up at a 45 degree angle Next, I'm going to use my weeding tool to find the letter centers and weed those out. 
Sometimes I use my tweezers to get the second part of that vinyl up. But my fingers are doing just fine today. Next I've got to find my scissors because these are of course two different names even though it looks like it's one at the moment. Here's the scissors. We're just going to chop in between the two names carefully of course to make sure we don't cut any of our lovely cut vinyl. Now I've got my two names ready. Now I'll just show you what they can look like. Let's get a rough idea. We've got one and we've got the other. Looking good so far. We've got the idea right. So now I've gone to the Cricut Heat Guide and I'm selecting my Cricut Easy Press Mini and my heat transfer material is Smart Iron-On. I'm going to press Apply and it's saying I need to preheat for 5 seconds on use my Mini Press on Medium for 20 seconds using constant movement and firm pressure and it's a cool to peel. So now I'm going to go turn on my mini press and I'm going to set it to medium and at the moment it's orange telling me it's not ready. I'm going to find my easy press mat and I'm going to check what I need to do. So I need to preheat for five seconds and I'm going to use firm pressure on a medium setting. Okay so now my mini press is green which means it's ready to go so now I'm getting my easy press mat out. And I'll pop that inside my neoprene bag. Now just be careful when you do this that you don't melt the zip. Now I'm just lining up the name in the middle using the ruler. Now I'm going to add some heat tape. Now I'm happy with it being lined up. So now I can flick it up so I can do the five second preheat here. Careful again that I don't melt that zip. Made that mistake once, don't want to make it again. Now at the mini there's no countdown so you need to use your own stopwatch or similar. Now once that's hot it will start heating underneath that vinyl so you want to make sure you're positioned, you're happy with the position. Now I'm just getting my stopwatch ready and we'll start and we want 20 seconds at least being very careful not to melt the zip. Now I say I've just gone slightly over the 20 seconds. And now your easy press mat retains the heat the underneath is cold so I tend to use that as a heat eraser it's worked for me so far now this was a cold peel so we want to make sure it's pressed down and completely cold before we peel especially on neoprene carefully lift make sure you're happy that there was no bits peeling off lovely I'm super excited with that one. That's ready to go. Now I've just got to do the second one. They both look amazing. I'm so excited to be able to gift these at the end of the year and I've created them using a bargain clearance item and some scraps so super cheap super personal gifts now if you've enjoyed this video hit that like and subscribe button let me know in the comments and check out these other videos thanks for watching and have a great day